as I mentioned in the last video, in this one we're going to focus on some more advanced uh, topics and some tools that are built into the Rails console. So this is a little bit of a break from uh, building the actual application. We won't be adding any features in this video. However, this is something that I use on a day-in, day-out basis, and the more you build Rails applications, the more you're going to be using the Rails console. So the very first thing I'm going to do is first I'm going to extend, if you come up the right-hand corner here, you can toggle the full screen, and I'm going to change in to our directory. Hit clear so we can have something to start off with. Now, a really neat feature that's built in is called the Rails Console Sandbox feature. And what that essentially does is it allows us to do Rails Console dash dash sandbox. And then if I hit return, what it's going to do is actually open up the console, but it's also going to make it so whatever changes we make automatically get rolled back whenever we exit the console. So essentially we could delete everything, we could change everything, we can play with it however we want, and we're not actually going to affect our data. And I'll show you that right here. Uh, we'll do a quick test. So we're going to do employee.last and the very last employee that we have in the database is Christine. And so we're going to do a few things that are going to change that. And you can see Christine here has a phone number, job type of salesperson, and uh, some different features like that. Uh, we'll be changing some things and I'll show you how you can update credentials straight here from the console. But then when you're in the sandbox mode, which is what I use a lot for development, you can automatically roll back. And so when we get out of the console, any changes we make will not be saved. So if you're trying to make some big changes for that itself, this isn't a good thing to do. This is more of just trying to learn about your data. I do this a lot to test relationships, test updates to different parameters, especially if I'm doing any debugging, anything like that, it works fantastic for it. So uh, one of the first things I'm gonna show you is what's called the last expression uh, notation. And so what I can do is by typing in underscore, you can see that it actually does the exact same query as before. So when I type in employee last, it brought me up that Christine employee. When I did underscore, it gave me the same thing. And you may think that that isn't very helpful because like I just showed, if I just hit the up arrow twice, it will let me get right to that uh, last query. However, what's really nice is say that this employee last query was actually very long. So say that I had done a lot of different things like I did employee last and I did, um, oh, let's see, I'm gonna have to call name and upcase, see if that works. Okay, and so I just turned her name uppercase. Now, if I wanted that whole thing, again, I could bring it up like that or hit underscore and now if I hit underscore, what it allows me to do is actually to add a function call to it. So I can do underscore dot, and then I can say down case, hit return, and there her name is now uh, back to being lowercase. And then I can do underscore again dot capitalize and now it capitalized the first letter of the name. And so that wasn't really to show you the string manipulation. Those are some things that I have in my Ruby course, but uh, uh, this is just to show you how the underscore can work uh, just to be able to bring up your last item and then be able to play with it from there. So that's the last expression. Uh, the other thing that is very nice is sometimes you wanna be able to see your data in a different format. So if I do, employee.all, what that's going to do is it's going to return a 
active record relation object. So if you can see right here, these brackets going all the way from here to the very end, this is a, a Rails active directory object. And so it's great. However, if you want to see what it looks like in other popular formats, so if mm -hmm. I want to do that last query and I want to say as JSON, and JSON, if you haven't used it before, is a very popular way of sending and receiving data. So if I, I want to do that, I just hit return. And now, if you notice, this is no longer an active record object. Now, it actually gets returned as JSON. So this is a really neat way because if you're creating an API, you're going to have to probably create it in uh, or send it out in JSON or in XML. And that's what this does uh, automatically for you. And you can see the format. You can see the way that uh, the objects will be created inside. And uh, it's a really nice way of doing it. Uh, the other thing really quick before we go into some other ones uh, that you can do is uh, store things in variables. And we did that in the last video, but I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to do E equals employee.all. And now E stores that value. So if I want to do E dot two underscore XML, what this is going to do is it's going to return us a full XML object. And so if you look up at the top where we called our JSON, uh, this has a whole different format than here. So here we have a full XML uh, object that has each one of the tags and it has a perfect XML syntax. And so if your API you're creating has a requirement of requiring XML, this is where you can see what those tags are going to look like and what your structure is going to look like. Another popular one is to uh, YAML, and YAML is just another popular uh, data feed, so you can do to YAML, and you can see that has its own type of syntax and its own tagging structure. And so it's a really nice way of being able to uh, build out those kind of things in a very, very short period of time. Uh, in a lot of other languages that don't have those things built in, uh, that process can take a very long time and can take a while to test it out. Okay, so now that we've built that out, I wanna show you how we can actually edit different values and items inside of your uh, console. So we have our E object still, and uh, this has all of our employees in it. Now, if I want to update something, so say that I want to uh, find, I'm gonna find that Christine value, that last one. So I'm gonna do, do E dot last, and we have Christine right there. And so say that I wanna change her name from Christine, say we spelled it incorrectly, say we actually needed it with a CH, I can do E, dot and then update underscore attributes and then change name to oh, Christine with a CH hit return oh and that actually caused an error oh sorry and the reason why is because I needed to call E dot last. If you notice, the reason why it caused that error is because you can't update all of the items with update attributes. Update attributes expects to only affect a single line item, not all of them. I'm going to show you in a second how to update all of them at the same time if you want to, but uh, you need to call last right after E to have that work. So we have E dot last dot update attributes name Christine, and there you go, it worked. So now if I call E dot last, you can see Christine now is CH instead of that K. And my daughter would be very mad if she heard that because her name's Christine and it's with a K and she gets mad whenever it gets spelled incorrectly. So uh, I won't tell her that I did that one. So now that's how you update a single attribute. But if you wanted to update all of the attributes, uh, Rails has a really nice way of doing that. So uh, what I'd like to do is look at our employee list again. And you can see that we have salespeople, we have managers, and we have a little bit more data about them. Now this is next thing I'm gonna do, may sound a little weird because you wouldn't do this part in real life, but uh, say that all of the salespeople actually worked out of the same office. So uh, right here you can see that we have a salesperson, Jordan, and has a phone number of 
this. And we have another salesperson, Christine, the last one, which has a phone number of here. But say that we wanted them not to have distinct phone numbers, but we wanted them to all have the same one. I'm not sure if you'd ever need that, but uh, there are times where you do want to update all of the attributes of a specific line items. So you don't want to have to go one at a time, but you'd like to affect all of them. And in order to change all of them, it's pretty easy. We're just going to call our variable. So we're going to do E dot, and then we're going to say where job type, because we're wanting to change the salespeople. So we're going to do job type, put it in a string, because salesperson is a string. So job type salesperson, and then update all. And in update all, we want to change their phone number. So we're going to do phone and change it inside a string. So 555-555-5555. OK, now this is going to be a little bit, this is going to be a tricky part because I'm going to hit return. And you can see right here that it changed the values on three. Now, the one thing, though, if you have tried to go ahead of what I'm talking about, if you hit E, and hit return, if you look at the data, you can see that none of the phone numbers were changed. And so that may kind of make you think that what we did didn't work. And actually, when I started out doing this, uh, this part was a little bit annoying to me because I, uh, I didn't understand the way the variables worked. So E stores all of those values. So it doesn't just do the query. It actually stores all those values inside the variable. So even though E showed that nothing changed, if we do employee.all, you can see that all of our phone numbers uh, for salespeople changed. And so that worked perfectly. Um, so that's uh, just something to um, just something to be aware of because uh, that could be a little bit tricky. Uh, just know that uh, variables do not just uh, call a query again. They actually will uh, store the values themselves. So uh, that's when you're doing update alls or anything like that, make sure you do something like uh, now we can do x equals employee.all and now x has that those uh, those correct line items okay so that's uh, updates now another important thing is destroy so if we ever want to delete somebody so say we want to delete me from the front of the list so if I do x dot first you'll see my name right there and so if I want to destroy my account then I'll do x dot destroy and destroy is just another word for delete so hit return oh and that actually oh sorry I made the same mistake again it should be x dot first dot destroy because remember x holds that whole object and destroy uh, does not uh, work on an entire object it only works on a specific item inside of the object so now if I hit return it went through, deleted my name. So if we hit X, you can see up at the top that uh, it has me again, but that's, uh, that's actually not the same one. It did work, and uh, if you scroll up to the top, you can see that uh, it's just because we have it in the variable. Uh, same exact issue as we had um, before. So if I do employee all, you can see now that the first person in there is Tiffany and the Jordan item has been deleted so just another kind of a reminder on the whole variable thing and that will be something you probably come up against quite a bit because I've been doing this for a while and I still do it uh, just out of habit and there are countless other methods and different things that you can do inside the console, but uh, this gives you definitely a good starting point. And one last method that I like to use a lot, because I usually have the console open the whole time I'm developing, is the reload method. And to do that, all you have to do is just type in reload and then the exclamation mark. And what that does is it will actually reload the entire 
uh, the entire system, with, if say that you updated any of your models or any of your schema files, anything like that, it'll update all of those right here. And we don't have to do it right now because we're, you know, we haven't made any of those changes, so there's no point to it. But uh, if you do have the console open and you're doing a lot of testing with that console and you go and make some changes, say, to a relation in the model, instead of having to uh, restart the whole console, if you just do reload with the pound sign, then and that or the exclamation mark that will do the exact same thing as getting out and getting back into it so uh, I'll delete that and then uh, you can see by hitting control D it's going to get us out of the console and one thing you may notice there it says the rollback transaction and what that means is that it just rolled back all of the changes we did so that we didn't damage anything in the app itself so now if we go back and do rails console and we don't even need it in sandbox mode but just regular rails console open that up and now if we do employee last remember last uh, we changed christine's name if you do that you can see it's reverted it back and so we have all of our same data just like and it also works for deletes so if I do employee dot all you can see that my name is back there right at the top and so that's all working properly so that's some more advanced tips on how you can use the console as you build out the applications please feel free to let me know if you have any questions whatsoever